Now, I can't keep you here all day, so let's just talk about the story of Hezekiah a little bit. See, this is all an introduction really for this. Faith won't work for you if it's you. If it's just you. If it's just, God, I'm going to believe you, but I'm not willing to really change. I'm not willing to make adjustments. I'm not willing to... See, it's hard to believe, and the Bible never offered us believing without repentance first. When Jesus came, he himself said, repent and believe. When John the Baptist came before Jesus, he said, repent. His message, the whole revival, the whole baptism that he offered people was one of repentance. Why? So that the red carpet would be rolled out for the Savior to come and so people could believe. And so these stories that we've talked about, these different miraculous cases of people, and Jesus said, hey, it was your faith that did this. It's because somewhere, somehow, the heart condition inside them changed. Most of the time, it was moment, you know, in a moment, in an instant. But maybe sometimes it had been over, it would have been over the time of the era that they lived in. Maybe they had heard the message of John the Baptist and it began to work in their heart. Maybe they had gone down to the Jericho or to the Jordan River near Jericho and been baptized by John in the river. Maybe see they had stepped in, they had been immersed, they had been willing. Lord, I'm willing. I, I, I want to tell you I'm sorry for being an Israelite and living the way I want to live. And today we need to do the same thing. Lord, I'm, maybe I'm sorry for playing the game the way I've been playing it. And so Hezekiah then is my, is my example for you today. And I want you to notice in chapter, you're in 20, but I want you to go back to 18, chapter 18, where it just kind of tells the basic story. Hezekiah, verse one, it says, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. And most of the, the, the books of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles, Samuel, they tell the story of the king, so they give the details of their life. But there's a detail in Hezekiah's life that's very important to understand. That's found in verse 2. It says, 25 years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And then it gives his mother's name. Now, go over to chapter 19. Point I want to make here is that Hezekiah had a reign of 29 years. That's kind of interesting because when you add up my days, I mean, I'm standing at 29 years. So it's funny that I'm talking about this today. This guy had 29 years. But in the middle point or the halftime of his life, he had a crisis situation. In fact, he had a, he had a double crisis. He had crises. And this is what happened. He had the king of Assyria come down and make plans to surround Jerusalem, surround Judea, begin to attack the outlying cities of Judah, or Judea, and make plans to take over Jerusalem. Now, the Assyrians had already invaded Israel. I don't know if you know your Bible history, but just make a note. There were, there were two parts of the nation of Israel at a certain time after Rehoboam, Solomon's son, decided to tax the people and be a bad king. Then Jeroboam took 10 tribes and they became what was called the Northern Kingdom, leaving just the kingdom, uh, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin in the Southern Kingdom. So there was a split. Now already during the time of Hezekiah, this was many years later, already the 10 kingdoms in the North, which were up in what was later called Samaria, those 10 kingdoms had already been taken over, the people taken out, Assyrian people moved in, and the people that had been moved out moved to a certain location. They, they never have come back since, not, at least not as a group of tribes. I believe that there are people in Israel today from all the tribes, but the most of the people even, even in Israel today are from one or two tribes. That's why they're called Jews because they're mostly from the tribe of Judah, which was the southern kingdom. How many people are following that? Okay, it's good to sometimes, it's good to know your history because those that don't know history, as we found out last week, are often destined or doomed, the Bible says, or, pe or people say, to repeat it, okay? So that's the deal. So Hezekiah is the king. He's reigning 14 years. Okay, he's a young man. What is he, about 39 years old? And he looks out the window of his palace one day, and I mean, here come the Assyrians, and he knows what they've done already. He knows how brutal they are. He knows how strong they are. And so it's like a half time in his life, like, what kind of king are you? Now, funny, Hezekiah's name means Yahweh makes you strong or gives you strength. <laughs> so as the king of Israel, that's what he stands for, really. 
He's like, he stands for the epitome of a strong king. Our king is strong. Our king will trust God. Our king will protect us from whatever happens. And pretty soon the day came when he got opportunity to prove it. And so he looks at it and he sees that. That's crisis number one. He's like, oh man, what, what do we do now? We're going to find out. And this is what I want to leave you with this morning. What did he do now? But before we get to that, there was a second crisis in his life, and that was his health. The Bible said he had some kind of serious condition that, that brought boils to his skin. Uh, whether it was a cancer or what, I'm not sure, but it was terrible. And it was so bad that God sent the prophet Isaiah to him. Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, personally to Hezekiah to tell him, you're not going to survive. You're not going to make it. Get your house in order. And so, wave your hand if you'd like to be Hezekiah. No hands go up. But I tell you, sometimes we're faced with similar scenarios and situations, aren't we? When, when you least expect it, boom, man, I'm facing something. What will I do now? I just want to go back to my little story in sixth grade, you know. I, I wasn't the toughest kid after that fight. I got beat up that day. But it helped me be a more courageous person in the seventh grade and the eighth grade. And finally, I got saved just after high school for me. And it used to really bother me back in those days. But as I, after I got saved, I realized, man, thank God for an experience like that. Because I can tell you what, in the last 29 years, the battles I've faced as a Christian, as a preacher, they made that little fight with Roger Stewart back up in, you know, in, the, in the bad side of my neighborhood. And, and they made that feel like nothing. If you're a Christian today and you never got hit and you've never, you've never understood what I outli outlined for you, man, I'm telling you, you know, I don't want to use the word luck. That's not a good word to use, but I'm telling you, you're blessed. But in one way, don't run from the reality of the world around you. And don't run from the reality of the church condition the way it is today. Be willing to stand up and look it in the face and say, God, whatever it is, I believe it is maybe halftime in my life. Maybe it is halftime in the church's life. And I want to know where I've been, what I've done, and what I need to do. So Hezekiah is facing a double crisis, man. Enemies at his gates from without. There's an enemy at his gates from within. He's fighting an outside enemy, which you and I are also. Satan is an outside enemy of the church. He's not talked about much in the church today, but his work is very evident. And it's very evident that his work is hidden because that's the way he likes it. We, if we don't know we have an enemy, it's the best possible scenario for Satan. The best situation for the devil. We don't know we have an enemy. We may not ever develop the faith that we need to combat and to defeat or to execute the defeat that Jesus gave the enemy. How are we doing today? So then he had the enemy from within, sickness. And I don't know about you, but I've heard so much lately about people having battle with sickness. So many Christians, so many ministers today and people that I know are battling with not just basic illnesses but with heavy duty illnesses and this is this is what hezekiah was facing it was a very serious situation but it was a half time in his life you may know the promise god gave to him god told him i'm going to heal you and i'm going to give you 15 more years but i want you to see how how he interacted with god so that he got that result from god okay so chapter 19 and we'll go quickly in chapter 19 I want you to go down to verse 14, please. Okay, now the king has already come. He sent his ambassadors. He's threatened the nation. He's done it in the hearing of all the people. It was so bad. And I mean, the, the devil's just like this, man. He made sure he didn't speak Assyrian. He spoke in Hebrew so that they could all understand that the Assyrians plan on coming to destroy you. And they even, they, I mean, it was down and dirty. I mean, it was like, don't trust in the Lord to save you. Because, I mean, after all, has the, have the gods of any of the other nations that we've conquered, have they saved them? Then he said, even your neighbors here, your relatives, the, the nation of Israel, the northern kingdom, was the Lord able to save them? And they say that in the hearing of the people to discourage them and to suck all the faith out of them. And so Hezekiah, man, he's confronted with this. What do I do as the king? And look what it says in verse 14. Hezekiah received the letter at the hand of the messengers and he read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. And I love this terminology. He spread it out before the Lord. 
That's what you and I need to do. When we face an enemy from without, spread it out before the Lord. Say to the Lord, this is what the enemy keeps telling me. This is what the enemy keeps doing. This is what I'm facing. God, I am not going to face it on my own. I'm going to spread it out so that God can have full view of where I'm at. Isn't that what the people did in the 10 cases in the gospel? Remember when they told them to be quiet, the two blind men, be quiet. Blind Bartimaeus, be quiet. You know, Jesus is an important religious, religious figure. He's passing through. You know, shh, be quiet. No, they spread their case out before God. Bartimaeus, man, you know, I love that. I mean, I just love it because I love to remind myself. He's like, Jesus! They told him to shut up and that was his response. What was he doing? Spreading it out. And maybe only 50 people heard me the first time. I'm going to make sure 500 hear me this time. Because, man, I want to be healed. This is a one-time scenario. Who knows if Jesus will ever come this way again? He's a healer. He's the son of David. He's the Messiah. He's the promised one. I don't care who knows. Jesus! I'm the one guy in the crowd. If there's no one else, I'm the one, Jesus. Have mercy on me. That's what Hezekiah did. He went up. He went to his own, his own room, his own house. He got before the Lord, and he spread it out before the Lord, and this is how he prayed. He said, O oh Lord God of Israel, which dwells between the cherubims. Man, I love that. He knew who God was. You are God. Even you alone. You're the God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. It's good when you pray to start off with who God is.